Ralph breaks the internet. The emoji movie. Ralph breaks the internet. The emoji movie. Ralph breaks the internet. The emoji movie. Don't you do it. It's already been in there once. <laughs> yeah, it's been four years and I still can't tell the difference. YouTube has been pushing its entire platform to short-form content because apparently the best way to be YouTube is to be TikTok now. So let me try and make this review as quick as possible. This movie is awful. Hey, you've reached the end of the video. The names scrolling by right now are of all the- No! This movie is awful. There is not a single second of it that I liked. Even that one funny thing that you saw in the trailers, I hated. Probably more than the rest of the movie. My hatred for this film burns more than Chicken Little, because that movie had the decency not to shit talky mushroom all over another film. I liked The Lion King 2019 more than this film because it had the decency to not utterly ruin and destroy every single character from The Lion King. Back when I started reviewing things in 2013, it was standard form in internet reviewing to give a synopsis of the film as you reviewed it. You want a synopsis of Ralph Breaks the Internet? This movie is about Vanellope going turbo, and that's a good thing because she's Vanellope Von Schweetz and can do nothing wrong. That's the long and short of it. I'm not exaggerating, I'm not making things up, or playing around. Ralph Breaks the Internet doesn't understand... Well, it doesn't understand anything. You think that Rolf himself wrote it. This movie makes me want a Rolf. I swear to God, can we get the first movie going? Is it turbo to want a friend? Or a metal, or a piece of pie every once in a while. Is it turbo to want more out of life? Yes. And can we see the second movie? The second I walked into this game, well, it, it felt like home. I mean, more than Sugar Rush ever did. But that's the thing, I want this to be my normal. I want this to be my life. This would be like if the Lion King remake thought that Scar was the good guy, despite him doing the exact same thing as he did in the original. Yeah, those lions deserve to die! I even want to ignore that this is my least favorite kind of sequel in general, but I can't. You know the ones. Where the first movie has this character going, if I had just this one thing, I'd be happy, and then the second movie goes, eh, screw it, I'm still not satisfied. All of the struggles that Ralph and Vanellope went through in the first one, Ralph risking his life to overthrow King Candy, and getting Vanellope into a rightful place, still not good enough for this candy-crusted little shit. It'd be one thing if the movie only forgot who Vanellope was in Wreck-It Ralph, but Ralph Breaks the Internet forgets who Vanellope is in Ralph Breaks the Internet. We start the film with Vanellope being all sad and miserable that her game is so boring. The one we spent the better part of the last movie trying to save. Then Ralph, apparently not having learned his lesson, screws off from work, risking his game to create a track for Vanellope that ends up getting her in a war between herself and the player, which ends up with the machine breaking. Now that Vanellope doesn't have to deal with the boring game that's so predictable and dull, Vanellope is sad that this boring, predictable game is broken, so she's going with Rolf onto the internet in order to save it. As they quest to save it, Vanellope becomes sad again that she has to return to the game that she called her home. Vanellope goes back and forth so much in this movie that if you asked me what game she was from, I'd say Pong! Vanellope is the most selfish little turd in this movie. Vanellope wants to spend her time in a game called Slaughter Race, a place that could legitimately get her killed. Because if you die outside your own game, you don't regenerate, ever. Game over. That's no good. My favorite part of the movie is all the parts that Vanellope forgets that she can phase through shit! And the movie has the audacity to put Rolf in the wrong for not wanting her to go in there. You know, despite the first movie having Rolf learning that it's a bad idea to game jump. No matter the cause. Don't forget, you know, Shank added my code and everything so I'll be able to regenerate. Which is only said offhandedly after Vanellope's selfishness nearly gets her killed more than once. Hey, isn't that what Turbo did? Literally, like, exactly what Turbo did? Like, the exact same thing? True, Vanellope doesn't screw anyone else while game jumping except literally everyone else in her entire game. Please, I'm one of 16 racers, they'd never miss me. The players love her, glitch and all. Just like I knew they would. Please tell me that there was someone in the writer's room, anyone, who at least commented on this. Have y'all ever seen Wreckin' Ralph? She was on the side of the video game. The whole time. Can, can someone please inform me how Kanye West, of all people, understood Wreck-It Ralph better than literally everyone who worked on the movie's sequel. I bet he understands math better than this film does too. Today is the 30th anniversary of my game. For 27 years I was a total zero without any friends. Is this film a paradoxical prequel, 
Or did someone just forget to have their script looked over by their second grade child? I'll bet that they could tell time better too! Rolf and Vanellope have 24 hours to buy a steering wheel to save Vanellope's game. They spend 16 hours in an MMO trying to steal one car. And then, with the remaining 8 hours, they try to make Rolf a mega super internet celebrity! And we only have 8 hours left to save my game! Bacon at about 950 degrees now for 6 hours, so... But he still needs 200 million hearts in the next 5 hours! Those last two clips were literally less than 10 seconds from each other! Alright, I guess math is hard. Felix, come on man, you gotta fix this movie! I'm gonna wreck it! Good! You see, Felix and Calhoun have this subplot where they raise the Sugar Rush kids, after they lose their home. It's really heartwarming and endearing, and there's only one thing I don't like about it, and that's the fact that it doesn't exist. Oh, the movie goes out of the way to start this subplot, but it does nothing with it. We never see it again. It goes nowhere and it has no payoff. And it never got past the storyboards because it was a much better usage of our time, plastering corporate logos everywhere. Strange for a movie to have made this much money on the most shameless product placement this side of an Adam Sandler film to not understand basic arithmetic. Then again, I don't know how much I pay for some of this stuff. Get rid of belly fat using this one weird trick. Ooh. Sassy housewives want to meet you. Congratulations, you're a winner. Really? These 10 child stars went to prison. Ooh. Number six will amaze you. Huh? Hey guys, did you know that eBay is loaded with pop-up ads that will take you to virus-laden websites? It's true. I mean, that's what happens in the movie, and eBay must have paid off the ass to be in a high-budget a medium budget Disney film. So I just have to take this film on its word that eBay is just loaded with pop-up ads. Why would anyone pay to be lied about? Do you really think that some Disney corporate heads understand anything about the internet? I personally checked out of that aspect of this movie pretty early in. About right here, actually. And Wi-Fi is the internet, which is an online community where human beings go to shop and play games and socialize. Any universe where Sonic talks about the internet that nonchalantly is one that is not hitting anything close to accuracy. I mean, if you understood the simplest part of the internet, you wouldn't be making this movie in the first place! The first game mentioned a lot of retro video games like Hubert, Pac-Man, Ralph himself is based on Donkey Kong, and it was made 30 years after all of these games got popular, because those games are still remembered, and remembered well. Do you think that in 30 years anyone is going to care about eBay, or YouTube, or BuzzTube, whatever they call it? The internet changes constantly. When I was growing up, the internet looked like this. I don't think I like your attitude. Kiss my ass. Coach, you do that again and I will- And now it looks like this. Four years on, Ralph Breaks the Internet is one of the most dated movies I have ever seen. You know how different 2018 was on the internet? In 2018, I was relevant. I mean, to be fair, Shifted into a floss? That was already out of date by the time this movie came out. Because animated movies take a long time to make. They started writing this movie in 2014. For reference, that's back during the ALS challenge. Um, in Captain America, the first Avenger, Red Skull refers to Yggdrasil, the world tree. Are we to believe, sir, that you are a descendant of that tree? Simpsons did it, like, this exact joke, when the internet was relatively a new thing. In 1999. You know what else I haven't heard since the year 2014? The term breaking the internet. Shouldn't it be Ralph wrecks the internet? Yes, yeah, since he is wreck it Ralph. You're not wrong. This is why no one likes algorithms or corporate heads. They build movies and platforms and follow trends that are years out of date. Yeah, yes, he's not wrong. But you are. This is a nitpick, but the title is terrible and everything I hate from the world. It reeks of corporate executives following broken algorithms following trends that ended years ago towards paths that make the world worse. Personally, I prefer Ralph Wrecks the Internet. But then again, I'm not a robot who sold his soul out to Mammon. To be fair, they do throw in some evergreen types of videos. They throw in some unboxing videos, some makeup tutorials. And then you remember that to understand this small aspect of the internet, they completely abandon the premise of Ralph being a video game character. Ralph is, you know, a retro game character, usually seen in just pixels. But all of a sudden he's in these high definition videos. It'd be like one day seeing Pac-Man in live action, doing makeup tutorials. Also, Ralph is in-universe a copyrighted character, and if you know Disney, they care quite a lot about copyright law. I highly doubt that Disney would want someone mass-producing videos using one of their copyrighted characters hijacking a website's algorithm to make a ton of money. But who knows, maybe Disney actually does support Spider-Man and Elsa videos, because the makers of those videos just wanted to buy a steering wheel for a retro game console. When Ralph and Vanellope overbet on eBay, they need to make $27,000 in less than 24 hours. You know how you make $27,000 on the internet? in 24 hours without being shady
The answer is you don't. Because they use a real website for eBay, I wondered why they made something up for YouTube. But then I realized it's because they misunderstood so badly how YouTube worked. First of all, Ralph gets paid based on the amount of likes he has, not the amount of ads that his videos have shown. Any website that works this way will cease to function. The website has to be getting some kind of income to pass it on to its users. It should be also noted that YouTube also exists in this world. Ugh, YouTube's got this one. Which just breaks my brain. I kind of wish that BuzzTube did exist though. The head algorithm here wants to see one of its users succeed, so it makes a bunch of pop-ups to advertise Ralph's videos all over the internet. This is not what any video sharing platform has ever done. Like, fucking hell. Never mind a platform caring about one of its users so much that it's advertising its videos. When's the last time any of you have even gotten a pop-up ad? Even as someone who doesn't use Adblock, I do not remember the last time that I got a pop-up ad. Because any browser worth its salt blocks them so hard that even the most shady websites today use more traditional ads. And they've been doing it since not 2018 when this movie came out, not 2014 when this movie began production, not 2010 when the original movie came out, but the late 2000s. A decade before this movie came out. This film is more of an anachronism than Facebook. You know what website lets its users collect its funds at any point? Literally none of them. Maybe I'm just pissed because I know how video sharing websites work, but it even goes down to some of the smaller things. And I notice things about websites that I'm less apt on. I also noticed that the Twitter birds weren't tearing out each other's entrails. Also, love all the corporate logos by the way, nice touch. That reminds me, this movie looks like shit. After we get into the internet, we have two aesthetics. When we get to Slatter Race, the artist asks a very thought-provoking question. What if we didn't have a color palette and just used yellow? I know it's supposed to look ugly, but the Slatter Race scenes are legitimately painful to look at. But most of the time, we're in the internet, which, uh, goes for a different art style. You know how companies keep simplifying their logos and sanding off any bit of personality? Yeah, that is the art style of this movie. I like to call it corporate minimalism. Minimal design! Simple, pure, and light, here's the bottom line. Basically, it's right. I mean, if you want to watch a whole movie that looks like it takes place in the Nintendo Wii shop, uh, you do you. But I prefer a movie that's actually visually interesting. One that doesn't use an art style that exists solely to sell a fucking brand. Tell me why this film isn't as shameless as the Emoji movie again? Oh, that's right, because that movie existed for nothing more than to push products. This is the most shameless thing that I've ever seen. What was that line from The Last Jedi? Let the past die. Kill it, if you have to. Not one to take that to heart, are you, Disney? I get fewer douche vibes from people begging for money clearly in their oversized mansions than this company bragging that it has a monopoly on every single pop culture milestone that's ever been created. People go crazy over the princess scene, and I don't know why. Cursed? No! Kidnapped or enslaved? No! Are you guys okay? Should I call the police? Look, if a human being shot on themselves as much as Disney did whenever princess stuff was brought up, you'd think that they were very insecure. Please, please like me. I'm sorry I made these outdated stereotypes. See, I hate those too! And I've got these new stereotypes that will be just as outdated in 10 years time. Look, personally, I've run out of patience for this anti-princess shit. Do people assume all your problems got solved because a big strong man showed up? Oh, maybe it's because Ralph built the cart you used to win, Ralph built a track for you to learn how to drive, Ralph then taught you how to drive, Ralph fought and defeated King Candy, Ralph figured out how to reboot your game, restoring you to your proper place, Ralph destroyed the Cybugs, Ralph brought the broken cart to Felix, another man who repaired it, and he also repaired the finish line. And every single time that Disney does that Hello Fellow Twitter users, it makes me want to take a bat to something. To infinity and beyond! Wise choice not recasting Tim Allen, by the way. And it might distaste for Disney using people's values for monetary gain has some of you out there turning red. First rule of the internet. Do not read the comments. Wow, that is some lightweight shit that causes Ralph to break. Anyone who's been on the internet for five minutes knows that you're gonna hear worse shit on the Pope's Christian Minecraft server. And considering how much of a creeper Ralph is throughout this entire movie, it's a miracle that that's the worst he gets. And let's... Get right into the news. 
30-year-old Wreck-It Ralph was spotted the other day being super clingy and obsessive towards a child. He was so desperate not to let her have a moment to herself that he found a virus which crashed an online MMO that could have potentially killed her just because he didn't want to leave her alone. You know, I can't help but think this whole mess is somehow partially my fault. I hate you. I'd say that Ralph was a bit insecure in the original movie, but this movie is not associated with Wreck-It Ralph. I don't know what this movie is. I'm not saying that I can name some names, but there are Tapper, Felix, Slash Fix that are better put together than this film. You know that scene in every movie ever? Where at the end of Act 2, the best of friends decide that they hate each other so much that they want to break up the friendship that's going to last forever for like 5 to 10 minutes? Usually because of a stupid misunderstanding? The only time, the only time in history it has ever worked and not been a complete and utter waste of time was in the first Wreck-It Ralph film. Specifically when Ralph breaks Penelope's cart. This here is so heart-wrenching it hurts more than some actual Disney deaths. This is because Ralph believes that he's saving Vanellope's life, and he has every logical reason to do so. Candy is obviously turbo, but he did come unarmed. You really believe that Ralph did what he thought he had to do, and in the end, no one would have gotten hurt. Not only does the sequel want to use the exact same cliché in the exact same place, but Ralph Breaks the Internet wants you to feel the exact same way because Ralph uploaded a virus to an MMO that nearly got Vanellope killed. And we should be against that because Vanellope wants to be in an MMO, despite it being a risk to her life and her abandoning her game. Don't think that I didn't notice that Vanellope stopped trying to help Ralph by the wheel as soon as she left the Disney masturbation scene. It was higher on her priority list to spend time in Slaughter Race than to save her game. She might have had a point that she wouldn't be missed, but wasting time when they were on a clock to mope makes her a worse princess than Merida. No, I'm not taking that back. Merida at least tried to fix what she fucked up. And Vanellope gets rewarded in the end. She goes turbo because yes. Her code gets updated to the new game. Why that was never allowed for turbo is never explained. And the movie ends with this copyrighted character being uploaded to an MMO. Sorry, I got that wrong. This child character who is copyrighted by another company gets uploaded to an adult MMO. Where she will exist for two weeks before the lawyers come and scrub her from the website. Because she's there for all to see. But I mean, who was really expecting a Wreck-It Ralph movie to know anything about video games? I'd say fuck this movie, but it's not 2018 anymore, and I'm not allowed to swear on the internet. Hey, you've reached the end of the video. The names scrolling by right now are of all the wonderful patrons who've donated to help keep this channel alive. If you'd like your name in the credits, head on over and make a donation yourself. Also, be sure to check out my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for exclusive content and previews of my upcoming videos. I've also got a forum where you can discuss anything that has to do with my content and connect with the rest of the community. To find anything that I mentioned, just visit my link tree in the description down below. Lastly, be sure to subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends. Oh, and thanks for watching.